Right, no bar. Good morning, Kieran. Um, another football weekend coming up. Um, how's things with you? Ah, oh, pretty good. All right. Well, I'm a bit disappointed from last weekend, you know. But hey, looking forward to this weekend semi-finals, both senior and football, both senior and intermediate, and also the junior games. Looking forward to watching them all if we get to them. And you know, from your own season, what lesson? Um, like you went into a squad that was sort of decimated. You know, Paddy McElroy was away in America. You hadn't got Darren Donnelly. You had injuries, but you seem to blood a lot of young boys, Kier. Aye, well, listen, look, look, we we give the youth their chance, as I said before. Like, you know, it's not it's down solely to a lot of work that has been done by Lesson Club. You know, the the the, the men on a Thursday night there, since them boys were eighteen or maybe twelve, now they're eighteen or nineteen. They have done a lot of serious bit of work with them, and you know, they're they're really all a bunch of really good footballers. And me and Carol firmly believe if they're old enough, they're good enough. You know, we know there's boys who went to Australia, but here, that's that's life. You know. I'm sure that's not the only club that has lost play to Australia. And here the club goes on. Uh, they played in the championship last year. It was a, you know, it wasn't a good day at the office for them, but they did lost them lads and they lost lads with injuries and one thing and another. But look, as I say, Kieran will do that. The committee have asked us to come in and see if we can take the lads over the line and help them out. And that's what we're basically there to do, to try and do it here. Some days, as I said, we, we might have met next season, we could have more, maybe possibly bad days than good days. But like realistically, they're coming from a league that's with the greatest respects to the likes of like Ardmore and Derek Colum Kill and Sean Dolans and teams like that. That's the level they run last year, where they're actually going on out to a league that they're playing against teams that are like like Greenlock, for example, you know, Banagher, Kilray, Dungiven, Steelstown. Like the the, the 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 jump in quality is going to be from as drastic. But look, we firmly believe in and the lads and give them their best shot. And there's one thing about them. We'll not fear anybody. We'll go out and try and express ourselves and play a bit of football. Hey, that's what it's about. The result over the null is meant to be a massive confidence booster. Aye, the result over the null, yes, it was a, there's no doubt about it, it was a massive confidence booster. But, hey, if we're going to dwell on that result over the null, we're going nowhere. It's a game of football. If anything, the null will be sitting there going to themselves, that's not going to happen again. So it's not. Like I told the boys after two or three days, yes, enjoy your victory, but just get focused on the next game. I know it gives them a bit of belief, aye, but they're, like, they're going to have to work twice as hard the next time they play Glenol. Because Glenol is going to be twice as twice as determined that that doesn't happen again. You know, so you have to bring the boys back down to, back down to ground, you know. Um, and then, Kieran, looking ahead to this weekend, um, I suppose, first of all, we'll look at the Fahim Vale and Steelstown game. Two teams that yeah. score pretty heavy in the quarterfinals. Um does it point to a high-scoring game, Kieran, or, or how do you see it? Well, hey, even the listen lads along there have always a bit of humour, but I'll tell you, <laughs> some of the predictions I might give you, they might, not, they might not just be right, because I was seriously impressed by Lomavari when I went to watch them against Steelstown. They played very well, and they took Steelstown within two points. Young Deary had the post in the last minute of the game. So I was thinking, the Vale, you know, and Lomavari should be a really tasty encounter. But I actually think I was a... I think it was actually a mental stumbling block. I just think Bohan Vale is the wrong there. Had the mentality to get over Lumavari, you know. Like, uh, you know, the, 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 some of the football they played under Given on, 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 on Sunday was, it was cohesive movement. Everything you asked for, support play. Like, they have some quality players. Like, they, like Kevin Martin there. Like Kevin Martin had one name. Gordon Fahey. Owen McElhaney. Michael Sweeney. And, like, that's not to mention Paddy Akeen. Like, Paddy Akeen. It's just when he gets the ball, he's just something different. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's a special player. So there's a game. Vaughan Vale will be, well, the, the, there's a drive on them this year. They'll be hurting from last year. I was at the game, you know, they were 10 points up against Ford Lane. And like, uh, to me, they're inexperienced, lost the game that day. Instead of chipping away at points, they run for three or four goal chances when they were 10 points up. And they, they should have put them over the bar. And they were down Ford Lane, I think, so actually down a man. But Ford Lane been Ford Lane, they never say die. They clawed it back and, they, and, and got, a, got a draw to that game, and there was no answer. They had, they had no answer in the replay. There was only one winner in the replay. So they'll definitely be highly motivated to try and get back and and, and get that trophy, you know. Steelstown, obviously, um, a huge one over, over the loan as well. And then once they get past, like they beat Lamavari in the group stages, and then they, they, they upped it against, against a Drumsurn team who was 
fancied themselves to, to give the championship a shake? Well, hey, look, they're in front of like in front of fine side, you know, great players as well. They're young boys, you know, and they're you know, they're they're strong right through. Again, county miners, one thing or and as I say, like unfortunately I didn't get to, but like I know there was like, nine points in the game, but was there was like it wasn't the story of the game, but the sounds of things they had to post, they had their chances, you know. But like Steve Stone sent a message out on the first game against Glenelg. And they had a they had a friendly, they had an in-house friendly, and it probably worked against them when they went to play Lomavari. So they did. But and probably maybe the best thing ever happened to them for maybe brought them back down to earth again. So it did because everybody's been talking about Steelstown and listen, that they, they have a right to talk about them. I, I was down that day in Own Bay whenever Castle Dawson narrowly defeated them in the final. And like they were gutted and they've always been there, thereabouts. And even from underage players, like even from when we were taking underage, them men have all now come through. Like, like young Forrester seems to get fitter and fitter and fitter every year. It covers every blade of grass. Then you have Mickey McKinney, you have that, you know, like you have that Ben McCarran is just a, a class, a class act on his own, you know. So, like, I'll tell you, it'll be a good game between them and between them and Fawn Bale, you know, it'll be, it'll be, it should be a, sets up for a real clinker. So it does. I remember that day you were talking about. Um, I remember interviewing Neil Forrester after it, and he was absolutely devastated, um, completely. Yeah. I mean, like like twenty ten, they had their hands on the cup, and then they didn't. Yeah. Um, is that is that hurt from those two final defeats to Castle Dawson? Is that the main thing they need to use to drive themselves on, or is it the fact that they've got a really sort of vibrant panel coming through at the moment? You know, what, what do you see is more important? Well, look, I think they can just bury that hoodoo. You know, like, Steelstown, as you can go back years ago, the teams they had and the quality of players they had, it was just they won that one championship. And once they get that one championship, I think they could be more to follow, but it's, it's easy saying that, you know. Like last year, like, they won an epic battle between them and Claudie. Like, it was top-class football from both clubs and it actually went to a, and I'm nearly sure it went to a replay and maybe extra mm -hmm. time and, they, they, you know, and Claudie, like getting to the final one thing, Laura, will even drive stage down, stage down even more. So they will. But uh, look, as I said, there was that day, that day down in Own Bay, and you like, you'd actually felt for them, you know, no disrespect to Castle Dawson, but uh, that's, I think, I think this, this could be their year, but it'll, it'll be higher. Who knows? Who, who, as I said, who ever thought that, that, who did, I didn't think that Paul Veal was going to go out and play Lomavari and give them a 20-point drubbing. Nobody would have predicted that. So football sometimes is hard to predict. Um, and when you're talking about predictions, can you call this one? If, if you had a tenner, who would you put it on? Aye. Well, it's getting them tenors is hard enough. But <laughs> I tell you, I just, it'll be a, no, to be honest with you there, it's going to be extremely hard to call. If Veal bring their A game and... and and put it up to the Steelstown. But I just have this funny feeling like Steelstown have brought on Raymond Tracy there this year back into the fold. And Raymond, a great player and a great coach. And they seem to have set up, like even just watching the reserve. I know they played fucking real reserves last night, but you hear gone are the days of the reserve team being overlooked. You know, used to be years ago, the reserves and you get a lot of boys up. That's not the case anymore. You're looking at your reserves as the next batch coming through. And I slightly go for Steelstown. Just not by much, but slightly. And I think Steelstown just might get over the veil. But, you know, you know, that's just my opinion. The other semi-final, Greenlock and Castle Dawson. Greenlock won the title in 2015. And Castle Dawson won it in 2016. And here they are back wrestling for another one. Do you see this yeah. one? Yeah, well, again... I see this one, this, is about, this should be a, a, a good contest, you know, like, like Greenlock was, Joe, Joe's been there before in, in 2015 or whatever, and he knows the players as well, and I'm sure they're glad they have him back, it's a good manager that he is, you know, but like Greenlock, like, Greenlock uh, two or three years ago, where a kick of the ball away from me, from, from a senior county final under Wee Nile and Bambo, you know, they're, like, they're, they're extremely well-conditioned team, right through, their, their, their fitness, their, their levels is extreme, their intensity and everything is just like Greenlock and like, there's some of the teams we're talking about and the, and, and the senior league in my opinion which challenge any of the top any of the so they want. There's, there's no doubt about it that's just my opinion but Greenlock uh, you know and the London Nile Lachlan and you can talk all you want about them and you know like we we, we in the previous in the previous round of the championship and 
like to be honest with you, for our lads, it was probably a game too soon. Like we'd only have four games in the championship, and to come up against an experienced, well drilled outfit like that, we probably the three best forwards, Robin and Yom uh, Wigan and Slam Leal, and you have Sucky and that there. Like in a couple of weeks' time or a month's time, Darius Hopes is going to be depend on them three boys and how they play. In my opinion, like they scored 14 points in a 14 for Ginlaw. So it's the team that could probably, with the greatest respect to the rest of the players, that nullifies these two men. But that's very easy. You know, that's a lot easier said than done, as, as I know. Like, they're, they're, they're just quality. And as I said, like, the work, like, we, we now set a foundation on there with them. And like, there's been carried on and carried on. Plus the fact that it's extremely hard to break down. They're, like, they're staying the work defensively hard. There's maybe a stage 12 or 13 men behind the ball. And then they have to, you can just break a pace with, by players with, like, Endelman and that. So, you know, again, in the sparring contest, as I would call it, earlier on, if you played a meaningless game against Castle Dawson, to see who topped the group. And they just got, they beat them by a couple of points. But then they had another weapon that didn't play that day. And uh, I'm sure he'll be back rearing, rearing and firing. That'll be end of them. Nothing yeah. to come into it, you know. But again, that's not to get away from Castle Dawson. Like Castle Dawson, over the last few years, you know, I've nearly, maybe uh, maybe two championships, three championships on an and intermediate level. They have quality players as well, like Aidan Keenan. You have Niall Manickel in the midfield. You know, like, they've, like, they've just, they've good players all around. So they have a, uh, Look, it'll be tight. It'll be tight, but I just think Greenlock will will get enough done and get them over the line. And my prediction is a Greenlock steals down final. Just on that game that they met in the league, Kieran, I, I was at it myself, and I think Greenlock lost seven kickouts in a row in the start of the second half. Um, they seemed to drop Ryan Tohill away behind midfield, and Paddy Henry swept up everything. Um, from watching them playing against yourselves, did you see a change? Did you see did you see them faring better in the middle? Look, in fairness, there like we really talked about this already. Like the like the brain lock of a tactic, they actually bully. You know, like they, they get at the goalkeeper and they're roaring and they're shouting just before they kick out. She even kicked and we had the boys told to do this to try try and influence the referee to try and influence the players to make them nervous. Like and, and in fairness to them as well, our boys battled hard in the middle of the park. But mm-hmm. not working back there, like we, like we went into that game there from the Glenon game at the start in fifteen. We had five players not available, and what two of them was our middle of the park man. Might have made a wild difference to the game. Who knows? But look, the lads have come on done their best. But look, they're very well organised and they're strong in the middle. And like I mean, even given Greenlock, like the big Bradley didn't play that day. He's a big colossal in the middle of the park for them. Like and you know. They're well, they're well organised, but like everybody knows Castle Dawson. But Castle Dawson's big man, like, like even at underage, you can just see they're just six foot and they're, like they're big men that can play football and know how to use the ball. And like I said, even the reserve team last night, like, like we played the reserve team last night, and the greatest respect, Castle Dawson reserves have probably won the junior championship. So it just tells you what they have. Like the, they're two quality teams and with, laced with quality footballers. But I just think. That the way Joe has them drilled and the way that they're set up and with two linchpins like 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 Niall Lohan and Emdalan, who's lethal on dead ball as we know, out of the fourteen points they scored nine from freeze, so they don't miss. Mm-hmm. And do you see a case of Niall Keenan having to follow Emdalan everywhere? The, the tough job that it is. Do you see that as something that Castle Dawson may try? Well, I'd say that I'm sure that they'll have their homework done. They'll have some plan done for Enda and I would say that could be the marking but you know he's, he's hard to follow so he's, he's a, just he's a quality player and what if Castle Dawson can nullify them uh, which I'm sure they'll be working on and listen it's going to be a, it's going to be a tight game again like this a kick ball. and again majorly referees have a massive massive decision in games of football if the referee's a good game or if the referee it's you know them calls is, is critical so as again, we keep forgetting. We keep talking about these semi-finals. With respect, there's always pressure on the referees as well, you know. And sometimes overlooked, they go out, they try their best. They maybe don't make the same call calls that they're, they're not everybody's cup of tea. But you know, them calls is, when you're training, maybe not this year from the start of February, March, and doing pre-season, and if just then we calls can maybe make a big difference in the result, you know. Here and moving on just briefly into the senior championship. Um... Slan Neil had a, had a big one over Glen. Um, now they're facing Ballandary, who uh, they've sort of they've come through screen. They've come through um, Newbridge in two fairly competitive games. What way do you see this one going? You know, a lot of people a lot of people said that you know the winners out of Glen and Slan Neil was going to give it a real shake. Um, Aye. 
or is that unfair? Yeah. Well, I, the owners of Glenn and Neil, I have given a real shake, but again, in my opinion, you have to, you know, you have to, you have to take, take into consideration. Don't forget the champions, no matter what. Mara felt the champions, and they have to be dethroned. You know, uh, Adrian Kosh has come in there, and he's done a great job with them, and, you know, he's got their first title in, what, 40-odd years, and I would say he's possessed, that that doesn't take another 40 years. I would say, has, has me and Ian will be to try and go with the great teams, the likes of the Slant Nails, the back-to-back -back teams, the Ballon Aries, the, the Balahis, and I'm sure Mara felt to be firmly driven to try and eclipse all those teams. And as I say, they have a great team as well. Like, and they have Emmett McGuckin and you have the Haverns and that. So I say, you know, like, write them off at your peril. Although they have a tough game against the Loop. Paddy Bradley's come in there in a short space of time. And the Loop playing really, really good football. You know, that all the tough games in his grip has, has, has probably stood to them. Mm -hmm. You know, because, uh, you know, to beat Korean has been no main feat. You know, Korean has been, well, like, what a club from junior to senior and, 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 and one in seniors. And, you know, Paddy has them going and, like he's he's no shrewd boy, so that'll be a tight game as well, you know. So it'll all be like and you have Coney, and you have Coney, and you have, and you have Young and Needle and that, like good players. So, but like the band there, this plant Neil game will be that'll be fun, I would say. You'll be on the phone to Martin, I'm sure. Oh, to be honest with you, he's always a great man to left the phone tell, you know. So, yeah, like, like, I like if you ever need advice or anything, like, there's there are no better man to. They call upon, you know, and he's, he's, he's just, his knowledge of football is unreal. And like, he's won three in a row way back there a good few years ago, you know. But like, just going on like, talking about the ball there and they'll get, you know, like, ball there is and a rebuild game from an IC. Like, you, know, you lost by Ganda and you lost states and you, like quality, quality footballers. Like, and then we now is bringing in like young Connor and Ilya and Oshin Mull and Sean Graham. And, you know, then you have Connor and Elvin and the model. Enjoy the watch. After where the he's on there, like a show me we can like. Score. I was not for him. Score. Hello. Sorry, I sort of lost you there a wee bit. You're back, are you? Well, they're, they're the boys look, they're the boys looking to do me a long time. <laughs> so, uh, so what were we just talking about there, Mal? Now you were saying there about Ballon there, you know Martin McKinnis very well, and uh, like Niall James and Mickey C have come in, and um, and it's a tough thing to come in because they've come into a, a team that wouldn't have been seen as contenders for a championship, and they've they've took them to the semi-finals. Like it's no mean feat. Uh, it's no mean feat as well. Like, like here, don't get me wrong. Like, you're, well, they're, they're, well all, they're always our contenders. But hey, never uh, as I, you right bound area after their, uh, their peril. Never right bound area off. Like, and I, as I said, like they've now called me on board again. Like, I mean, know what Niall can do with the boys, and he's a good backroom team there. He's he's, he's bringing on like the, the change of guard, like Lawson Enda and Lawson Dietz and players like that there, and they're, like they've brought on like young Connor and Ian Sean Graham and Oshin Mullen and boys like that. You know, you have, then you have Connor Nevin, and again, you have one of the, one of the top players in there as well. You have, you have Stocky Bell. But the big question will be, and in my eyes, I'm looking to see who's going to mark, who's going to pick up Young McGuigan for Slant Neil. Like, like, he's on fire. Like, like Nine points he scored against Glenn out of 14 or 15, am I correct? Yeah. And what's he scored so far in the championship this year? Four what? 440. 325 can play, which is something. <laughs> Uh, 440. I I played for <laughs> I played for 19 years and never scored 440. So that's <laughs> pretty good going. <laughs> so it has. But uh, your man, like again, like you're going to have like you don't know who's going to pick him up. But Gareth McKinnis and him will be a great duel in my opinion. So it has, like you're talking about one of the seriously the best defender, one of the best defenders in Derry football, and that will be an epic duel to see them two go at it. But who knows who picks him up? Maybe Gareth will be put on up the field or whatever. But that's that's going to be interesting to see, like, and, uh, even in Slant Neil, like, I watched Slant Neil this year, you know, like, with Paul and, 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 and Horst Devlin there, and from Tyrone, and like, they have them well going, and, like, the brand of football they're playing, and some of the football against Glenn, and Glenn's football was unreal too, but, like, just their use of the ball, the kick pass, and their pace, like, Rogers driving through from full back, you know, and just my opinion, like, when Slant Neil maybe won the two or three, once you lose one, It'll put a hell of a lot of hunger. I think they'll maybe enjoy, if, they, if, if, they, if they won this game or if they get to the final or if they won it, they'll probably enjoy this one better than they've enjoyed the first one. 
I might be wrong, but you know, it's just it'll be it'll be interesting, you know. You saw Neil coming through that. Well, hey, <laughs> I have to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to rule. I'm going to have to. My head rule my heart this time. And the wee man might not be phoning me tonight, or maybe Karen might just step away from me. But I'm just going to age probably slant Neil to do it. But as I said, write them off at your apparel. You know what's bound area we're talking about. The championship pedigree. They know what it's like. The one championships and. I'm sure Niall Colme will ex- expect every bit of energy p- pushed out of them to, to give Slant Neil their full of it. And very finally, Kieran, on to Maher Felt and Luke, just touching on the game t- to sum up. Like, Maher Felt have come through two really tough battles, Lave, um, where they created loads of goal chances, but st- you know, and still had the battle to win. And against Swatter, they were in complete control. Like, Unbelievable control, and then had to scrap for their lives again against a loop team who came back yeah. all points down against Cool Rain. Like that's how do you even start to call a game like that between those two teams? Uh, listen, I was like, I was, I, 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 I was very friendly of the late Colm Rocks, and, and Colm coached us for a lot of years. And Colm says always used to say, "League football, we don't care about." He says, "When it comes to championship, he says that's when we come alive." And it always sticks in my head. You always watch the lip go through it. But just something about championship, they just love it. And they, you know, I, they couldn't have a better man steering the ship up there in Paddy. You know, and he's looking at the job he done with New Bridge. And, you know, he just puts pure passion into it. And I'm sure, not even on that, their forward play. And, like, you're talking about one of the greatest forwards ever to play football for Derry. And, he, like, his, his young Keelan Devlin flying. And, like, you know, you've like a land in the middle of the park, Terence O'Brien. Like, like what a colossal Terence O'Brien is. Anthony Neal. And, you know, they're, like, the lips, the lip. As I said, when it comes to the championship, they just they turn up and you never write them off as well. But you know, you're talking about Mara Felt, like like Mara Felt last year, and like Adrian Kush, and it's well documented. Everybody knows or anybody follows the game. Like like Adrian Kush went out one night and played open football, and and, and everybody knows the result. Like and they were out now and they've tightened up their defence and they play and they play counter attack and football. You know, a great target man on Emmett McGough and Ivern. Like, match them, but just get into that mentality. And now, you know, they're strong. You know, when it comes, you talked about them games that were real, real drawn out encounters. Probably the fact that having won that championship and the belief, probably years ago, they might not probably get over the line in them games. And that's why I give all the full respect that they're going to be an extremely hard nut to crack. And I think they, they just could age out the loop. But again, like Balderry, I'm not sitting on the fence. You write the loop off at their peril. So you do. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be a tight game. But I, I think we, Adrian Cushes know how in the ways I'm set up. And I think that Mara felt just might get over the line. But that's going to be a big tight one as well. Thanks very much, Kieran. What, uh, what does the winter entail for yourself? There's no, no football. Do you just start planning for next season? Or do you. Uh, well, when you're fanatical, well, in, in fairness, the world. how do you switch off? Well, hey, to be honest with you, there. You don't switch off. It's just, uh, like after the green, after the green lock defeat there. Like you're, you're look, hey, look, you're just plan away. You plan away for next year. You know, I expect the boys. I tell the boys to go enjoy a winter and be prepared for 2021. You know, like and as I said, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's, it's a season of like if you asked a hundred people in Derry, uh, who do you think will go down to that league? I would say 95 will say probably listen and. Look, that's the way it is. That's the mentality, and that's the mentality we want to create for them, boys. Their backs against the wall. Opportunity for young men to go out and play against and given probably that their uncles and more them never got to do it. To Ray and good teams like that. And as I say, like looking at the past results as well, and the way the league structure has changed, which I I personally am against. I think it's terrible that the likes of teams like Derry, Colm, Kill that are, 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 are everybody's important as the teams that we're talking about here, Slatton, Leon, Ball and Derry are asked to go out and play teams that, like, like Des and Martin and Balearn that are like are, are intermediate sides. I don't know what the thinking is on the structures, but as maybe to progress teams, I don't know. But like Lomavari won their championship, played excellent football, got the Ulster final, unlucky to lose the Ulster final that day and moved up that league and I stand to be corrected, I don't think they won a game on that level. And that's no disrespect to Lomabari, it just shows the quality that they're coming up against. Mm-hmm. So we'll be under no illusions of our quality that we're going to be coming up against. But there's one thing, we'll never throw on the towel or we're never going to go out to a game saying that this team's better than us. We'll go out and do our best. And that's all we can ask to the boys. And 
as I say, at the end of the day, you know who always gets the blame. It's always the managers. When you win, you're a hero, and when you lose, you haven't a clue. But sure, hey, that's the choice of football. I don't know why we do it, but we must be half mad. Kieran, thanks a million. Always great to talk football with somebody like yourself. Um, um, and enjoy your weekend watching the games. I enjoy the weekend watching the games, but I'd say the wife will be glad to see all this over for she hasn't seen me as two months between Banner and Listen. So I need to spend a bit of time in the water outdoors or I'll be I'll be on baller. Thanks. No baller, Mal. Thank you.